Good morning, everyone, or whatever time it is for you. Welcome to another reading vlog. I totally forgot to film my breakfast. So it's Sunday, February 26th. This is my first Sunday off in two weeks. Like, I haven't had a chill Sunday in two weeks. So this is very exciting for me. And I just put in rollers, which is only the second time I've done it and I do it super messily. I'm so bad at doing hair, which is ironic because my shag video blew up and that's the thing that helped me be able to monetize my channel, which is so funny because I don't do hair content. Anyways, in this video I'll be reading the Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I'm reading it digitally on my phone and I'm actually already more than halfway through but I didn't want to do another reading vlog where I'm starting it and then I only get like a little bit into it before I end the video because I feel like that's not as interesting. I am really liking this book so far. So the Cloisters by Katie Hayes is actually magical realism, mystery, and occult-ish art history. <laughs> um, basically, we follow this young woman who has just graduated university. She grew up with a degree in Renaissance art. She is an academic, an art historian, and she grew up in this tiny town called Walla Walla in Washington and her father has recently passed away and they always had this very strong connection growing up. He was the one who taught her multiple languages. Quite a few of them are dead languages, but she just has this love of languages and the occult and studying things in the past. Sorry, there's construction right now. Her mom and her didn't really get along that well. She says how her dad was like the glue that kept them together. So once he passed away, being home was very not good for her and she wanted to leave the small town or she fears that she will become like just stuck there forever in a routine and not happy with her life so she takes this summer mm, summer apprenticeship in new york at the met museum but then something falls through and the director is about to send her back home but this other director of the cloisters museum which is like a museum that showcases rare art. I'm not really sure, but they also have these gardens of herbs and there's a lot of magical elements in there, um, witchy stuff. But anyways, he sees something in her because she studied the Renaissance stuff. So he's like, Patrick is like, why don't you come work for me this summer? So she goes there and meets this other woman who is working there called Rachel. It's just her and Rachel in this very cozy old library filled with old books. They're doing a lot of archival work because they're working on this exhibition for the end of the summer about tarot. Her boss, Patrick, is very hell-bent on finding this one set of true tarot cards from the 1500s that really prove that the occult was being used back then commonly. Um, so they're spending their days going through these old works. Oh my gosh, how do I explain this well? They do tarot readings and at this point the main character, Anne, is like not sure if she believes in all this stuff or what. She's like, they talk about this as if 
it actually exists and it's real so she's kind of skeptical but at the same time she feels a pull um toward the tarot and really feels its energy and presence so it's kind of like that um they do do some tarot readings there's a sensual energy to the story and mystery and you're very drawn into it and i really like that and something else i really like about it is how anne is this young woman trying to come into herself just starting out her life and really finding this friendship with rachel that i don't know why it just gives me a vibe of something bad is gonna happen between them but it's also very sweet because growing up she never really had girl friends so that's been nice to see yeah i really like Anne's um just like her anxiousness and sort of feeling like an outsider that's been really relatable and she's not annoying at all as you'll sometimes see with these sort of books so i really like that <sighs> i've been kind of waiting to do this vlog because i wanted to like almost get to the the turning point and i just got there this morning like something happened and i don't we don't know how it happened yet but something happened okay but i've been talking for long enough now so i'm gonna stop and continue with my day for now bit of work to do this morning it took me two hours to get out of bed but it just be like that sometimes it's almost 11 now I already had breakfast and everything and my hair's capacity for being messy is just astronomical okay so just ignore it hopefully I'll have everything done by the time I have lunch or maybe a little bit after is all right as well. I have to reply to discussion posts and that's all I have left for school this week. And then I have to finish something for work that I started on Saturday and did not have the energy to finish, but I'm almost done, which is great. Then I have to proofread that and do some other finishing touches and then I'll submit it and then I have to send in an invoice for my February earnings which is very exciting and that's what I have planned for this morning and then depending on how much time I have this afternoon I will maybe just read more I have some things I want to work on but I don't really feel like it because I have this like tension that I've been holding in my stomach and I just need to relax. But I will relax more tomorrow and Wednesday, which is very nice. Let's do some work.
Look, this is what I have. It's 4 p.m. now and I already showered. <laughs> um, I just spent the afternoon editing because I was done with my school and work stuff and this was the only more pressing thing that I wanted to work on. Um, there's been some other things I want to focus more on as well but I feel like I always have so much on my plate and I have so many different things I work on and but especially for my blog it's been just very inconsistent I only post like once every few months now um, and I've been really wanting to do a new blog post and I think I finally know what that's going to be. I'm going to do a more personal post, which I haven't done in a long time. But that's how my blog started out, actually. And I really want to get my page up where people can post submissions if they want to do a guest post. And I really need to update my about page. Oh my god, I did that like in spring 2020 when I launched my blog. It's completely like false now, my about page. <laughs> well, not completely, but like 90%. I'm in bed because I just wanna chill. <sighs> I will be making pesto tonight and usually my sister and I will start cooking at five which means instead of showering at five, like I usually do, I will shower at four. But today I just wanted to shower earlier so that I could still have an hour chilling <laughs> before I go downstairs. Cause my capacity for chilling is yay big, yay big, like galactic. So I will just read now for the next hour. Wow, this looks so Secreted by hippo's subcutaneous sub glands, subcutaneous <laughs> glands, which does not contain blood. I actually skipped a bit. It actually says, which does not contain blood liquid exists. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> is that a joke? Hi. It is a little past 8 p.m. now. The pesto I made was so yummy. The rest of my family had chili. I just had to make pesto because I can't have tomatoes. It's like my biggest eczema trigger. I love pesto. It was so creamy tonight. Like, mm, it was so good. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the book. I'm like nearing the end of it now. Hopefully I can finish it tomorrow because 
I want to finish it by the end of February, and tomorrow is February 28th, but if not, it's fine. I will still count it as my February reads, though, like when I do a video on it. In my first clip, talking about this book, I forgot to say that the curator, Patrick, is curating this exhibition surrounding tarot and he's really persistent on finding this one set of real tarot cards that people used to use. So I forgot to say that he did actually find a deck from this collector and he bought it from him but it wasn't complete and then when they go back to get three more cards from it and the protagonist uh, finds out something about it, like when she's by herself, that reveals their true authenticity because at this point they weren't sure, but then she finds out and then she holds on to it for a bit. Also, her mom sent her from back home these translations and random scribbles that her dad used to have and she finds in one of the documents it's literally what the tarot card says and eventually she tells Rachel about it as well when they go on a trip together to Rachel's estate and they figure something very monumental like this will change both of their careers so that's this secret that both Anne and Rachel have to sort of keep but then more things happen and things unravel and like I said before the, the friendship between Anne and Rachel is not healthy there's a power dynamic in it and that's because of how Rachel never really had friends and she just wants a friend you know but that's all I can say about it at this point without spoiling it I mean I will tell you about it when I finish it without spoiling it of course but just like more thoughts now I will just watch some YouTube and read a bit and then I was supposed to wash my hair today but I didn't so I'll wash it tomorrow morning I don't do this very often but I love when I get to wash my hair just shower in the morning because then I just feel so comfy the whole day and ready to have a relaxing day. So I'm looking forward to that. Time seeds update on my borage. Why didn't you say it like that? Borage! Time seeds! <laughs> I don't even see it. Cover this up a bit. Just the tiniest bit. Here. Cottage core! <laughs> Cottage core, cottage core. Oh my god, I'm in Animal Crossing. Haha. <laughs> A few days later since I last talked to you but I finished the cloisters um, two days ago in bed and it was amazing I just spent the entire afternoon reading in bed which was very enjoyable I don't have enough days like that anymore 
so that was really really nice and I loved the ending there were so many twists and turns because it is a mystery novel and I'm not gonna spoil anything but yeah you just find out so many things like the story unravels at the end I love the way the author wrote that the author Katie Hayes is actually an art professor so she studied the same things that the protagonist did and this is her debut novel which is so cool like lately I've been really thinking about how it's okay to just let my writing come naturally to me like I shouldn't rush trying to develop a whole story because I haven't even lived yet if you know what I mean like it's fine to write a novel later right now I'm working on other things <laughs> but it's just very admirable I liked the writing and <laughs> that's really all I can say I mean I can say that it did make me want to do more tarot readings again because I haven't really been doing that consistently so I did one yesterday and it was really nice and I would give it a 3.5 I'm not sure why I wouldn't give it a 4 I don't know maybe I would I mean obviously on Goodreads I would give it a 4 because there's no half stars but I've been testing out Storygraph. I'm still not sure how much I like it. But I... Uh, but yeah. A 3.5 star, I guess. I would say the book is very atmospheric. And... Yeah. So... I will also talk about it in my February Reads video, which I guess I will be filming soon. That is it for this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed. I tried to talk more about my thoughts and hopefully it was not too messy or incoherent. And um, if you watched all the way to here, comment three book emojis, like the flipped open book to let me know. I will see you next time.